My name is Christy Davis. This is a nursing assessment for 355. I will be assessing neck vessels and the heart. My patient is Billy. Billy, can I assess your neck vessels and heart today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. For the purposes of this assessment, um, she will remain closed to maintain her privacy. But in a clinical situation, I would do this against fair skin. It would not be through clothing or a drape. Uh, begin my assessment by standing on the patient's right side. The head of the bed needs to be at 30 to 45 degrees. I'm going to begin by assessing the uh, jugular pulses. And to do this, uh, Miss Billy, if you could look to your left, please. And I am visualizing um, for pulsations at the clavicles or the suprasternal notch. Um, I'm looking for the presence of the internal jugular. If I have problems visualizing, I can use a light source like a pen light or an exam light. Um, after I inspect the pulse, I need to evaluate the pressure of the jugular. And to do this, I would raise the head of the bed at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60, and 90. If you see distension or bulging at 45 degrees or greater, um, that is an abnormal and would need to be further evaluated. Okay, you can look forward for me, please. The next thing I'm going to do is auscultate the carotid artery. You need to always auscultate before you palpate because by palpating you can disrupt the um, rhythm and cause you to get some abnormals that may not truly be there. Uh, to do this, I will use the bell of my stethoscope. And Miss Billy, if you would please hold your breath for me. Okay. Um, by holding her breath, that keeps the um, breath sounds from occluding the actual sounds of the, of the carotid. And what I'm listening for is to see if I hear a bruit which would be an abnormal sound. Next, I'm going to palpate the carotid um, using two fingers. It will be to the side of the trachea, medial to the sternocleidomastoid. And as I palpate, I am assessing for um, weak rebounding pulses, uh, for any irregular, irregularity, or for a thrill. Um, would especially want to feel for a thrill if I had noticed a bruit earlier, as this can indicate narrowing of the vessels. So next, I will go to inspection of the precordium. Um, the first thing you want to look for is at the, um, the mitral area where the apical impulse is located, which is going to be on the client's left side, the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line. Um, you want to see if there are any pulsations in this area, which would be normal, and then move on to the entire precordium to watch for lifts or heaves. If you see any pulsation in any area besides at the apical or mitral area, then that is abnormal. Um, after you inspect, you would move on to a palpation using, again, two fingers back into the apical area. You would assess for a brief tap. Um, if you are not able to feel it with your fingers in the supine position, I would ask you to move to your left side for me, please. And you will use the palmar surface of your hand and feel in the same area. Okay, you can move back over for me. If you aren't able to palpate with the fingers or the palm, this could be because of the client being obese, uh, if they have large breasts or in the presence of pulmonary um, emphysema. You might not be able to palpate that. Um, after palpation, we'll move on to the auscultation. Um, for the demonstration, I will be auscultating with the diaphragm, but in a clinical setting, I would auscultate all areas with the diaphragm and the bell because there are different um, pitches that you will pick up with bell or diaphragm, sometimes not, not both. And when I am listening, I will be listening for the presence of the normal heart sounds, which are S1, S2. Um, also, abnormals, which are S3, S4, um, gallops, friction rubs, um, clicks. Uh, I will also be assessing for the rate and rhythm, um, looking for bradycardia, which would be less than 60 beats a minute, or tachycardia, which is greater than 100 beats a minute. I will start out by listening in the um, aortic area, which is on the client's right side, second intercostal space. 
moving to the hormonic area, which is the second intercostal space on the left-hand side, moving down to the third to fifth intercostal space, which is herbs point, then to the fifth intercostal space, which is the tricuspid area, staying at the fifth intercostal space and moving to the midclavicular line, which is the atrial area. If I did notice any irregularities in the heart rate, I would want to check for a pulse rate deficit by listening um, at the apical area and palpating the radial pulse for one full minute at the same time. Um, I would also want to assess for murmurs uh, during this time using the bell and the diaphragm. Uh, murmurs can be listened for in several different positions. Um, supine, I would want to listen with the diaphragm over the apex. Uh, I would also want to position the client on the left side and use the bell to listen over the apex. And finally, sitting on the side of the bed, leaning forward and exhaling, I would want to listen with the diaphragm at the apex and again at the left sternal border. And this completes my assessment.